friend of mine, David Burder, who's on 3D Images and does wonderful things with optics, sent this uh, napkin to me. It's a napkin. It's just an ordinary paper napkin. And you said something extraordinary, so I put a little note in it to remind myself not to throw it away because it's something much, very, much more unusual than you think. This actually occurs many, many times um, in the world ever since, no, since 1990 when the thing was first being promoted. What we've got here is repeated patterns and what he spotted, which is something that I occasionally do, is when you get your eyes to go parallel, the eyeballs, and I'll hold it there, if you can have a go yourselves at looking at that very carefully, as if it's a magic eye, i.e. you either put your hand like that and take it slowly away, which is the old way of doing it, or you train your eyeballs to go parallel, you will then see some very, very nice three-dimensional features to these, particularly on those grapes there, due to the repeated patterns being a little bit askew, and because it hasn't been designed that way, there's a few little bits of pieces where it turns some um, pseudoscopic and it turns the wrong way around, which is very bizarre. And this is the case for wallpaper and all sorts of things, which have repeated patterns. If you get your eyes and train them to go parallel for what they call the magic eye effects, you'll see some marvellous things, and this is something that David had spotted, so very grateful to him. Here's something else I think he, he probably sent it to me. It's one of these things. It's a ruler, which is lenticular, which is particularly good. And this is a particularly nice version of it. See if I can get it into focus first. It's, well, you have to see it. And now if I turn this like this, and I turn it rapidly or very slowly, it looks more from it. It's going fast, because they're obviously running across the field at high speed. There's no wind there, I don't think, but it's the um, relative speeds through the air that's making their mains flare like that. It's got a very, very nice action. That's one of the nicest I've seen in a big open field. Three horses galloping. Wow. And the last of the three, you know, let's hang on, there's two more paper things to show. This is a, a very, very nice um, birthday card. That's where you write your notes, happy birthday to you. And then you invite the person to open it up. And of course, there's a real treat inside. There's a pop-up, but of a very high order. Look at that. Instantly, you've got a fish in a tank. And there he is. And I'll see if I can get the spring to wobble a little bit. Here we are. He, he, he rocks a bit because he's got, he's got a spring base. Ooh, look at that. There's the side view and there's the spring you can see on, on these. So it collapses beautifully like that, opens up and appears as a really, really nice fish in a tank to wish you happy birthday. Wow, good one. The last of the card ones is this lot here. I do love playing cards which have got something quirky with these. And the normal, what they call the bicycle decks, very standard, but the other side is not what you expect at all. Oh dear, look at that. The naught of, the naught of, and zero of, the naught of. And the last one, which is even bizarre, is uh, a messy, a messy, a messy six, six of spades. So nothing more than just joke cards, which you can slip sometimes into a serious game of bridge, and people will look at that and say, what on earth? Oh, I'm sorry, you said it came out of my, I slipped it, oh, beg your pardon, etc. You know. There's two more items to show, which are very, very small, but very neat. I love things which have got some clever mechanics to them. This is a ballpoint pen, and every ballpoint pen I've ever had in my life, and I've got loads and loads of them, to make it operate, you have to push something here at the back, don't you? Or push a slide bit here. This one, you do the absolute opposite. You pull it. You pull it out. I'll well, see if I can get that in focus again. There's a point of a pen. Oops, there, there. And now what happens if I push it in? Instead of going further, it goes in again. Pull it out. It comes out and push it in again. It closes in. Oh, with a snap. It's, I can't do it slowly. It's actually got a, ma a magnet. Oh, I don't know what it is, but... What an action that is, so completely counterintuitive. I never come across a pen like it, like, and it's probably unique. Anyone ever designed it before? I found ones that bend and so on. A lovely German company made it, but this one here, do the opposite to expect. Well, there we are. The last item is just one of these little key fobs, which uh, you put on, the, on your bunch of keys. It's, got a, it's, it's basically case, encased in rubber, so it's quite... It's quite um, It's quite firm. It's a little of camera, of course. And when I push the button, because it's got that. So hold it to the microphone. Very familiar. 
Yeah, it's a nice one. So take pictures while you can. The trouble is it doesn't take pictures, but I'm sure with microtechnology, they'll come over there, they'll overcome that sometime and um, serve up one of these that really takes pictures. That would be something, wouldn't it?